Okay, today I'm going to do a video on oscillation control. The, uh, I saw another video on YouTube of a fake instructor literally teaching people wrong or not teaching people how to control oscillation. It's just horrifying what pe some people have to go through. So I am going to walk you through oscillation control so no matter where you learn or thought you learned how to fly, we can actually give you some true and accurate information that can literally save your life. If you don't have oscillation control, the, you literally can get killed from this one single thing because there are gliders out there like MacPara, uh, Gin, and Ozone, and some others that will oscillate violently and actually get worse. They won't fix the problem. They will actually get worse and worse and worse until you loop face first into the ground. And people have already died because of this. So kind of important to understand how to control oscillation, especially if you get scammed by some idiot who sells you a Mac Para or Gin glider that oscillates violently. Oh my gosh. It's, it, <laughs> oh my. If you really understood how horrifying some of this stuff is, you would be uh, completely infuriated. Okay, little motor run up. Boom. Runner up to full throttle. Make sure the fuel is flowing perfectly before you go to launch. And so you just get that fuel flowing, work the air out of the fuel system. Always drains out. Whoa, see that? Whoa, crazy power. It's flat top. Bingo. Okay. Ninja power. Whoa. My son was flying this. <laughs> so if your kids fly the same unit you do, you got to adjust the harness. Hello. That is pretty neat that the flat top is so lightweight. Even little kids can launch the same extremely powerful unit that you see me setting world records on all over YouTube. Bingo, okay. Let's go flying. So today I'm gonna fly the Extra Extra Small Dominator. That's one of my favorites, because it kind of gives you the ultimate of performance and safety in the same wing. And I wanna fly a much smaller glider to kind of show better that oscillation as well as how to fix the problem. So let's go flying. It's middle of the day, it's about two o'clock here. It's probably 80 degrees out. And the wind is getting a little funky as it does around that time. But that's why we fly a Dominator. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Got the rotor off of that building there. Take a second to get off the ground. Don't want to turn the air, pull your trims down. Always launch trims up. Because trims down is just like pulling five, six inches of brake. And what happens if you pull five, six inches of brake at low airspeed? Well, you can stall your glider. So very important that you have your trims up for launch. But once you get up, you pull those trims back down. Okie dokie. Let's go do some oscillation uh, demonstration here. Oh, and of course, notice uh, torque. No hands, full throttle climb now. And notice I am climbing in a straight line. Perfectly level, zero torque at all. Right over the power lines, so I want to turn right. I simply lean right. If I want to turn left, I just lean left and see no hands. No hands, turn 
happening. So weight shift is another one of those critical things, very, very important for an instructor to teach a student. Because if you don't weight shift properly, the torque of the unit will, will make you lean to the side. But it's worse than that because once you lean, your body weight then falls to the side. Let me show you what happens if you're a total moron and did nothing. If you hit the throttle, boom, unit torques to the right. Now you fall right. And I just did a complete 180 to the right. That's what happens if you don't learn how to control torque. Very, very critical. All of the engines out there have torque. Even if they lie and say they have torque compensation, it's false. If you don't have counter-rotating props, you have torque, which is a total non-issue if you just eliminate it. With the flat top, you got the best weight shift in the industry, so you just weight shift and completely eliminate that torque. So here, same thing, full throttle, climb out, boom, no brakes, and you climb perfectly level. All I have to do is shift my body weight slightly to the left to eliminate the full power torque, which is very minimal on a flat top. Okie dokie, let's do some oscillation control. That's what this video is supposed to be about. So I am going to start an oscillation, get the wing swinging back and forth. Now first, I'm gonna let the dominator fix it just to show you why we fly a dominator. So I'm doing absolutely nothing, no brake input. And there's one, and there's two, and bam, nothing. The Dominator returns immediately to straight and level flight. Now other gliders do not do that. Actually, you can see in this other video of another total scammer out there pretending to be an instructor. Just watch as the student oscillates violently back and forth and this person pretending to be an instructor tells them to do nothing. Doesn't even tell them how to control and prevent oscillation. It's a total nightmare. So you can actually hear in the video, he's saying, oh, don't do anything about the rocking. Don't do anything. Uh, that's oscillation. And yes, you do need something. You do need to respond or it will turn you as you can see. Don't try to adjust the rocking. Don't try to adjust the rocking. Looking good. Stay on that throttle. Looking good, brother. Looking good. Okay, so how do you stop oscillation? Let's get this oscillation going. Rock it to the left here. Rock it to the right. Now all I have to do is when the glider goes left, I am going to pull left brake as it swings above me. So here we go. And boom, left brake, oscillation is gone. Just like that, one hit. But the timing has to be correct. It's backwards to what's intuitive, which is why it can get people killed. Because the normal reaction is, if the glider goes to the left, they pull right brake. That makes it go right. They pull left brake, it shoots off to the other side, and bam, they can pound face first into the ground. So if you don't learn how to do oscillation control, yes, it can and will get you killed. Very, very important that you get super training so you have actual instruction on how to do this. Okay, let's show you how to do that again. When the glider swings to the left, I'm gonna wait until it's swinging back above me and then I'm gonna hit left brake and I'm gonna stop the glider above me. So let's get the oscillation going the place, glider goes left, I wait, 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 left brake hard, bam. Eliminated oscillation, the energy goes straight up, and I fly away. Woohoo! Okay, I'm getting a little violent here, because <laughs> I have too much fun doing this. All right, let's do it a little more gently. Flip around this direction. Okay, we're gonna start a little oscillation. Swings back and forth. Now, let's do one from the right side, so here we go. You're gonna watch that right brake. Glider goes to the right, I wait, I wait, and right brake now as the wings 
above me. So you have to stop the wing above you. Don't focus on bringing the glider back above you. So if the glider goes right, don't pull left brake. And when the glider goes left, don't focus on pulling the right brake. You actually pull the brake on the side it goes to. So if the glider goes right, I wait until it's swinging above me and then boom, right brake. And that cancels the energy because the glider's trying to swing this way. And so I hit the right brake as the glider's going left that eliminates that energy and cancels that energy. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's do it again. This is a little bit fun. Woo! Time to the ground. This spiral while we're at it. Can't help us out. Okay, so how do we stop this? We exit. We hit right brake. And both brakes, throttle, hands up. And that's how you exit a death spiral. Don't even think about trying that. You want to have me walk you through that at Super Train. Okay, couldn't resist that one. That was too much fun. Okie dokie. While we're climbing back up, let's have you watch this video. Listen to this fake instructor literally telling the student to do nothing. You hear him saying, oh, don't do anything about the glider rocking. Don't do anything. And he's literally telling the guy to not control the glider. Imagine learning how to drive a car and they tell you, do not touch the steering wheel, just floor it. Yeah, that's completely retarded. So listen to this video and listen closely for this fake instructor telling the guy not to fix the oscillation and not giving him any input on how to fix it. Don't try to adjust the rocking. Don't try to adjust the rocking. Looking good. Stay on that throttle. Looking good, brother. Looking good. That is seriously insane. I mean, can you believe that? I mean, it's hard to even comprehend a person would pretend to be an instructor when they literally don't even know what oscillation is, let alone how to fix it, and are not teaching people how to fix something like that that can get you killed. And as you watch, that glider is horrible. It oscillates over and over and over, and it just keeps oscillating, unlike the Dominator that would fix it. So let me show you the Dominator. We're gonna do it again, start an oscillation. Here, no brakes at all, and I do nothing. Didn't touch the brakes. There's one rock. Oscillation is all but gone. So if you have a proper glider or a good glider like the Dominator, it is designed to stop oscillation. And keep in mind, this is an extra, extra small with about 270 pounds of weight on it. So it's a heavily loaded, super safe glider because it's very resistant to collapses. But even with that loading and the small glider, the Dominator still eliminates oscillation for you. But that is not an excuse for someone to not teach you how to control oscillation. So now we are gonna fix the oscillation. Glider goes to the left. I just wait till it's above me. I hit left brake. That's it. That's all there is to it. And if you practice it a little bit, you should be able to get to where one single correction and you fix the problem. Glider goes right, I wait. Now watch, right brake. As the glider comes above me, I simply stop it above me and bam, zero oscillation. Let's do it again. Glider goes to the right, now watch this right. Right brake, bam. That was it, one brake input, stop in oscillation. That's an instructor's job is to actually teach you how to fly and how to control the glider. When you look at these people and totally fake instructors and completely fake certifications, 
it, it, this is a nightmare. You have to use your head and look at the skill of who you're talking to. Another thing you notice is you won't hear these instructors explaining to the student how to control torque. You notice in that same video, the guy takes off, what happens? The unit torques him off to the right. So the torque of the motor leans him to the right, he falls right, the unit turns right, and the so-called instructor tells him absolutely nothing. Not one single bit of input on how to weight shift to eliminate that torque. So I am going to show you no hands, full throttle, now watch. Are we turning right? No, we're not turning. Why? Because I simply shift my body weight to the left to eliminate the right torque. Bam! A little body shift, no torque. All done. And then we go to oscillation control. Glider goes this way, glider goes that way. I just hit right brake and now as it comes above me and bam, there we go, oscillation is stopped. This is what you call instruction. Teaching the student how to control the aircraft. Someone telling someone to do absolutely nothing and demanding that that's instruction is completely asinine. This is not Ford versus Chevy and this guy comparing to that guy. If they were both good, you know, I would just beat their price. We are talking about people so horrifically incompetent and dishonest, they literally don't even know the first thing about the sport and don't teach anyone anything. They put you in a trike and tell you to hit the throttle and do nothing. That is not instruction unless you are a moron. Seriously, you have to look at these things. Okay, let's do this oscillation control on a big old spiral dive. Here we go, diving at the ground. Little break to exit, break in right, and now watch, I'm going right. And so as I come out of it, I just hit right break right there, stop the glider above me, bam, I completely eliminate that turn and spiral dive. Let's get into that a little bit more. How do you stop a straight down spiral? Let's go have some fun. Interestingly enough, it's basically the exact same principle. You're gonna stop uh, the oscillation and stop the rotation by breaking against the direction the gliders go. So here we go, we're gonna climb up a little bit. I'm gonna swing it around, straight at the ground. Left brake, stop the rotation, and then you control oscillation. Bam, stop the rotation, control the oscillation. Yeah, it even rhymes, pretty cool, huh? That's what instruction is about. So if you're in a right spiral, well, you pull left brake and you stop the rotation. As soon as you stop rotating, you're gonna swing under the glider. It's that swinging motion that keeps you in that spiral if you fly a death trap glider. If you fly a dominator, it will of course uh, eliminate that. It'll return straight level all by itself. Okay, let's do a nice spiral dive. Crank it straight down. Now we're spinning right, so I hit left brake. Stop the rotation, then stop the oscillation. Bam, stop the glider above me. That was all there is to it. Stop the rotation, stop the oscillation by braking against the energy of the glider. If the glider's going right, you stop it to the left. Don't flip it back to the other way. So don't pull so much brake, it then turns back the other way, but you just pull enough to stop it from going that way. When the glider's oscillating, the glider goes right, I wait on that brake, and boom, right brake, and I just make that energy go straight. There you go, that is how you eliminate oscillation. But it's much harder <laughs> than it sounds. Obviously it's more difficult than it looks because you have to pull the correct amount of brake. If you don't pull enough, it's still oscillating. If you pull too much, you could make it turn the other direction. Although it's difficult, 
because you're breaking against the energy. So let me actually pull a little too much this time and kind of show you what happens. So we oscillate to the right, and now here we go, right break. And pretty much it just turns into that right turn. So if you add too much, it kind of turns. It's not that big of a deal. But the goal is to practice this over and over until you can eliminate oscillation with one single brake hit. You just get your glider rocking back and forth a little bit. Here we go, it's going right. Now watch for the right brake, brake, hands up, bam. I eliminated the oscillation. That's what that is called, oscillation, not rocking. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, that's so fun. Now, one really important thing to practice once you get home from super training is how to do a foot drag. Why? Because managing altitude is absolutely critical. That's the same skill. The skill to do a foot drag is exactly the same skill it takes to prevent collapses. That and walking up a vertical wall. So first you start, well, first you start from 30 feet. Start up at 30 feet. Once you get to where you can maintain a really consistent altitude using brakes, if I'm sinking, boom, I add brakes. If I'm going up, I go hands up. I'm sinking, I add brakes. If I go up, I put hands up. Once you get good at that, then you drop down to your 15 feet, then 10 feet. Now, if you go below 10 feet, you need to get out of your seat just like you were landing. Bingo, out of the seat. Now, if you watch the hands, here we go. If I'm sinking, I add break. If I'm going up, I go hands up. And it's all about hands up, hands down. So I'm doing a no highs foot drag here, not watching what I'm doing. And bingo. Break, hands up. Break, hands up in the mud. Very nice. Okay, let's just kick that off in the weeds here. We'll blast through some weeds and have the weeds clean it. Woo -hoo -hoo! Yeah. There we go. See, all clean. Weeds are a very good cleaner. Uh oh, now I got fuzzies all over me. Great. How do you get fuzzies off? You just fly backwards. Here we go. Crank it right. Put a wing tip down. And fly around it. Woo -hoo -hoo! Up we go. Now keep in mind if you fly a full 360, you're going to go through your weight. How do you control weight? What do you do if you go through your weight? All right, let's show you. What do we do when we fly through our wake? I'm gonna do a full 360 and I'm gonna go through my wake and it's exactly the same as a foot drag. You simply control the loading of the glider. Around I go and here's the wake. And boom, there's the wake. And you simply maintain that perfect loading of the glider. It's exactly the same skill it takes to walk up a vertical pole or a vertical wall or manage the altitude of your body using the glider. So when you see people walking up that trailer, walking up the wall at super training, that is teaching you a mastery of how to control the loading of the glider. So if you accidentally go through your wake, you don't take a massive collapse, you just prevent it. You just manage that loading of the glider. All these things are very, very critical, but you just don't see others doing this type of instruction. It does not exist. Might sound weird for me to say I'm the only instructor in the world teaching this, but again, I'm about reality. Show me wrong. Post a video of anyone else teaching their students perfect glider management like that and walking up a vertical wall or even something basic like reverse kiting with no hands. Let's see you post a video of any other instructor in the world doing that, the instructor doing it, let alone their students. Then let's see a video of any other students doing it. It's, this is, it's crazy that super training is the only school in the world teaching true and actual skills but right now, that is the straight up truth. Why do you think they talk so much crap? They talk crap 
because they can't refute what I'm saying because what I'm saying is the truth. So there's a reason people talk crap and they bash and trash and lie and call names. It's because they can't explain what the actual truth is. They can't refute what it is I'm saying. Okay, take a look at that dust. Where's the wind coming from? Looks like it's sort of down the road, a little bit cross. So I'm gonna come in and set up a landing exactly the same way I took off. Here we go. We're bringing in, again, this is all managing altitude control. So if you didn't learn altitude management control at training, you didn't learn how to land properly. And boom, set up a foot drag, slide it to a stop, bingo. And that is how you land properly. Bingo, slide it to a stop, maintain perfect altitude control using the brakes and or throttle if you need to. You need to learn how to land first without managing the throttle, but always keep your motor running. There's another thing that's kind of insane. You see people being taught to land with their engine off. Can you imagine a 747 landing with their engine off? Why do they not land with their engine off? Because they have no options. What if somebody comes out in front of them? What if the wind changes directions? What if they get hit with a crosswind? What if you're about to land and there's a little kid in the field? Yeah, only a fool lands with their motor off. You need to keep that motor on so that you have options. You have the ability to change your direction and to abort that landing at the last second if need be. The real reason others are landing with their motor off is because they are so incompetent and have so little control of their glider, they fully expect to lose control of their glider and drop it in their prop when they land. So they literally try and tell people, oh, make sure you turn your engine off. Never, ever, ever at super training will you see students turn their engine off for landing because we love the student. We care more about the student than we do about the gear. Think about that. Does this instructor care more about the gear than the student? Hello. So, yeah, you always land a motor on. Of course, you know, other gear is so horrible, most gear doesn't even have protection from the prop. So you go land with the motor on, you might chop yourself in half. It's total insanity. Again, either get super training and call me, or you look at the skills. Look at the reality. It is not about opinion. There should be no confusion whatsoever. It's about facts. You either learn true and real skills or you don't. Either the instructor can show that they're training students properly or they can't. So if you want to get in the sport, get super training. If you got scammed by another instructor and you don't have even the most basic skills, don't just quit the sport. Just get super training and do it right the next time. So call me. We'll make sure you get rocking.